So welcome all. I am speaking with Moira Bramley this morning. Hi. Um, hi Moira, thank you so much for taking the time to be with me. Oh, thank you. You have a class coming up shortly called The Currency of Contribution. Yep. Um, and while I have a sense of what you're relating to, because I've been involved with the Money Workbook um, classes with you, I'd really love you to have a conversation about what that is. What is um, the <clears throat> well, I looked at the word currency because most people um, take contribution and put it into a currency. It, you know, um, the exchange rate, which is something that Gary Douglas gave a name to, which is basically how this reality has been set up. You know, you get you you give me that, I I give you this in return. You do this for me, I do that in return. So we do it with time, we do it with money, things. Um, yeah, all sorts. And, um, but there is an actual um, real currency of contribution where um, everything that you receive as contribution, everything you give from the contribution, make, co contribution makes everything greater. So people, as far as I'm aware, and I'm maybe only speaking for myself, are aware of a, a give and take a give and take universe uh, yeah, and a place of obligation and it's it's built into how we be our manners you know you must write a thank you letter to you do you know it's well even it, that I mean how many that, kids it's not a compromise are, it's, and yeah, it's, it's like how many kids write it because they have to write it and they've been told that that's what they have to do but actually getting in touch with a genuine energy of gratitude and thank you so much contribute for contributing this to me for you know for um gifting this to me then yeah it's 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 how many how many of us i mean i when i first started access consciousness and had no idea truly what the energy of gratitude was i was brought up in a a very dog eat dog old mining village where everybody was was struggling to survive so um there was very little gifting and receiving in the town the family or the town that i was in and um during the quarantine time, I started to look at what would um, actually create a, a, a sustainable planet. I mean, I was looking at um, economies. I started to research economies and um, looked at, I mean, most people know the GDP is the gross domestic product and it's how um, we measure the world economy. And I mean, pretty much every country is in debt almost every country's in debt. There's 63 trillions worth of debt. And, and it's, 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 just all a con it's just all a construct. It's like, if, to whom? Soon as the, <laughs> to whom this, are we $63,000 in debt? <laughs> exactly. And then the interest rate goes up, you know, and um, inflation goes up. And then there's more all of a sudden pretend money. It doesn't even have to be printed. It's just automatically there. Um, but the GDP is, was... was um, it evolved. It was changed during the Second World War. The United States Congress wanted to know how the country was doing and they wanted to know how um, much services were being used and provided, how much product was being bought and sold. And, and the, the concept is um, more is better. And this is what we've all bought, more is better. But we exclude our very beings and we exclude the planet and we exclude our bodies. And um, something that I have been asking for my whole life and just gotten to dynamically recently is um, you can do and gift or give if you're being you're very being and most people won't know what that is because I've just gotten what true contribution is most people um, they just do and doing is a contribution but if you don't include your very being you're the one that loses it and if you're losing out, everybody loses out. So everything comes from, I mean, every, all economy is attached to the ecology and it's the ecology of being as well, the ecology of us. Um, everything in the world revolves around, um, eco economy is attached to everything, everything that's going on. Economy is involved. Um, and it's and it all it also comes down to it brings in the um, I can't remember the name of the law. It's a scarcity paradigm where you know if I get this slice of the pie, somebody else has to get less. 
And that's just not true, but that's a construct that everybody seems to hold in place. It's like, if I get less, you get more. If you get more, I get less. And it's insane. And we're all still living our lives by it. And we're the, the, what's missing is us because we're so busy putting our attention outside of how to get more. Um, I, I learned that very young. Um, I followed Richie's knowing truly that that wasn't going to give me me. I was like, okay, well, it make me happier. Let's see. And, you know, I moved into a $12 million house, had my own private beach, um, was driving a Porsche Cayenne, et cetera. And I was like, okay, there's something wrong with me. I, this isn't making me happy. But I knew before I got it, it wasn't going to make me happy. So how many of you guys are chasing something and you know somewhere deep that when you get it, it's not going to make you happier? Yeah, it'll entertain you for a while. But it's not what gives you you. You can be as wealthy as, and um, I mean, as rich as, but you won't really be truly wealthy. So the so wealthy is when you are you are connected to everything. You have you as energy. I mean, we're an entity of energy, but we're connected to everything, and everything contributes if we're willing to receive it. And if we learn how to contribute to other. You know, if you contribute to something, it contributes more to you. If you contribute to a beautiful, I don't know, a plant, and you look at it and admire it and enjoy it and are grateful for it, then it kind of, it makes the plant greater. <laughs> Truly, the plant thrives. They've done loads of scientific experiments where you scream and get angry, or you put plants in angry places where people just, you know, have got no gratitude for them. The plants don't do very well. So at, at the moment, in these times after COVID and some folk are coming out in different stages from lockdown and stuff, I notice it's the reaction to the actions that were taken by government is very much um, looking after your own patch, but in a way that excludes. It's not looking after your own patch to make it wholesome and healthy and, you know, how... Uh, how best can I make it? It's more about a defensive energy of, you know, I'll, I'll just hear batten down the hatches. Um, and it's, yeah, I mean, it's, it's a huge definitely a separation created. between it has, and people it's also, and themselves. It's, but it's also created for some people, it's also created a lot more connection to themselves and to what they're capable of and who they be and what they actually truly desire. Mm -hmm. So it's gotten a lot of people who are seekers have um, taken that time and space, like where they don't, have all the distractions so um you know they're not on the treadmill doing 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 they're taking that time to go do i like my life do i want to change anything it's giving them the space the breathing space and the you know enough time away from the distraction of other people because so many of us are distracted by other people you know trying to fit in where do we fit where do we benefit where do we win and where do we not lose so from that that where do we fit, where do we fit in where do we benefit and what people have recently been through the currency of contribution appears to me to be a way forward for not only individual beings but for the planet itself yeah well that's during the during the covid um quarantine that's i started to research well what economy would work and I was looking at, you know, the donut economy is one of the most popular ones right now. They've actually adopted it to recover from the COVID-19 in Amsterdam. And it's where they don't go outside. It's literally a shape of a donut and it has two lines. <coughs> Inside is where the very hole in the donut is where people's needs, um, it's where people are under the needs being met. They're, not, they're just barely surviving, they're alive, but they don't have, you know, clean running water. They don't have education. They don't have, they don't have, they don't have. And then inside the donut is where everybody's comfortable. And then <clears throat> the model of economy advocates that you don't go outside the outside circumference where you start to eat into the planet's um, resources, energy, um, ecology. You don't take uh, anything outside that line. You don't look to create money outside of, you know, what's going to be create a sustainable planet. And it's great. And it doesn't give, I mean, there, I'm, I was looking at it, studying it, going, yeah, but don't really... Um, Anyway, it does what it doesn't. I won't go into that. What it doesn't include is um, 
the awareness of what's really required is for us all to get start receiving and contributing energetically. It literally is an energetic thing. Our first language is energy, whether people want to know it or not, it's energy. <clears throat> and, you know, if you're loved by your dog, you know that energy. If you're hated by your mother-in-law, you know that energy, you know, which one contributes more to the dog or the mother-in-law? <laughs> um, you know, how many of us receive totally from the planet and from nature? You know, it's something that we've learned to cut off. We function from doing, doing, doing and not being connected to our very being. And if you're not connected to you as a being, and a lot of people won't know what that is, um, I'm try and go into it and I'll, I'll go into it and see if I can in a minute but um, if you're not connected to you you're not connected really to anything if you don't know that you have energy and that everywhere you direct your energy and everything you choose to receive from is a contribution then you're kind of star you're starving yeah I'm, I'm excited to it I'm excited by the conversation and, and wondering, you know, what, what will it take? What does it take for more people to realize who they be? Well, it's not really a who, it's, it's that they I mean, be. Every, that yeah, they every be. choice we make creates us, yeah. And it, it's been willing to explore, you know, I love Socrates, the unexamined life is not worth living. Um, so I'm just trying to get rid of something on my computer there. Um, it's looking to see that every choice you make, is this a contribution or is it um, the opposite? Is it, you know, creating less or more? Um, and what am I not willing to receive or what am I not willing to gift? And we're all, we all function from barriers. We're barriered to the hilt. Like, not that I have this judgment about that person, they have that judgment about me. So it's making all of those energies. Now, they're energies. What is a judgment if somebody, you know, judges that you're greedy? Then that is an energy, you know. It's not a physical thing that you can touch. So that is what you are, energy. And whatever your choices you make, and it could be just an, it's an energetic choice, it could be an energetic choice, that's who you're choosing to be in that moment. That's very cool. <laughs> Oh, is there, um, I know I've heard you say before that if, you know, if people want to come to class, you know, if they get it, they'll get it and they'll come. But is there something else about the currency of contribution you'd like to say? This is a seven week series starting on the 1st of July. Mm -hmm. um, it's just a choice to ask a question. I mean, everything is contribution. Are we living from that? Because if you're not, you're going along the surface of your life, just um, not really living, just surviving. And I think occurrences um, will dictate that people will no longer have that choice to live on the surface of their life. I think that yeah, they will. times are now that, <laughs> that they, you know, it's, how we function is is going to to present oh, in order to create what we'd like to create. Missed the last sentence, Anne. You froze. Oh, sorry. Just the last sentence. I'm saying how we how we function is going to become vital in terms of being able to create what we desire to create. I well, don't think has people. Been, it's just people have never really. Um, We've distracted ourselves way too much. We've never really been interested. But the, what's the great thing about the COVID-19 is it has gotten a lot of people to turn, and I'll say turn inward, it's not really turn inward, it's just getting more connected to what works for you and what doesn't work for you, what you truly desire, what your life's about, what you're here for. And there are a lot of people who just would just like a nice house and a good job and that's it. They don't desire more of them or more awareness of how the universe works how they can receive more from the planet and that's fine it's good it's just not what i would like so if like me you're very interested in all of those things and continuing this conversation 
relationship. Um, please join Moira on the 1st of July uh, to find out what else is possible with this topic. Um, cool. I'm excited. Thank you for chatting with me this morning, Moira. It's been a Thank pleasure you. as always. Yeah. And I'm looking forward to continuing this conversation. Cool. Bye Thank for now. You. Bye, everybody.